As we saw, the work on RNNs for language translation sparked two key innovations that made today's large language models possible. In the last episode, we looked specifically at the encoder-decoder architecture. In this episode, we'll cover the introduction of the so-called attention mechanism. Attention-based models are currently responsible for the state of the art in all language modeling tasks. The simple encoder-decoder translation model that we saw in the previous episode works, but it's got a fundamental issue. It condenses the entire input sequence information into a single vector. Now, this becomes a challenge with longer input sequences. In truth, every encoder hidden state at each input point holds important information. For example, the English word milk corresponds directly to the Italian word latte, but not to the other words. Similarly, to be able to correctly translate the word the in Italian, it's important to consider the word it refers to, milk, so that the article of the appropriate gender can be chosen. All of this is lost when the only link between the encoder and the decoder is through the final hidden state. We need a system that allows individual outputs to focus selectively on specific parts of the input. Such a system was proposed in a paper titled Neural Machine Translation by Jointly Learning to Align and Translate by Badano et al. Although not originally termed as such in the paper, this approach is now widely known as the attention mechanism. Instead of discarding the encoder outputs at each step, the idea is to carry this information to each decoder input in the form of a context. The context is a dynamic, weighted combination of all encoder states, allowing the decoder to pay attention to specific parts of the input sentence. The attention mechanism functions by assigning a relevant score or weight to each encoder hidden state. These weights determine how much attention the decoder should pay to each part of the input sequence when producing a particular word at that decoder step. So the problem is, how can we calculate these weights? Let's consider a very simple implementation. For each word that the decoder is currently translating, we can implement an attention mechanism that uses a simple multilayer perceptron. This MLP takes as input the current hidden state of the decoder and the hidden state of the encoder for the i-th input word. The output of this MLP is an attention weight or score, reflecting how closely the input word relates to the current word being decoded. These weights are then computed for all of the encoder states, creating a set of values that represent the relevance of each part of the input sequence to the word being translated. We then use the softmax activation function to ensure that these scores are positive and normalized, which makes it easier for the model to learn how to distribute attention. The decoder can therefore now compute the context for the current word being translated by doing a weighted sum of all encoder states with the attention scores. Signals from input words with higher attention scores will be more prevalently represented in the context, allowing the decoder to focus more on these words. This mechanism allows the translation to be context-aware, as the decoder selectively zooms in on the most relevant parts of the input sentence, leading to more accurate and coherent translations. This is an example matrix showing the attention weights generated by Badono's model while translating a sentence from English to French. Each column represents the weights for each input word, you can clearly see the attention patterns the model learned to generate. For example, to translate economic area, the model learned to pay attention to the English words area and economic, even though they are in a different order. Let's now explore more sophisticated and general forms of attention that have gained prominence in all of today's state-of-the-art language models. 
One issue with the attention mechanism described so far is that it uses the output vectors to fulfill several purposes all at the same time. For example, they need to encode a distribution for predicting the immediate next token while serving as a key to compute the attention weights, as well as encoding relevant content to inform all future predictions. Such overloaded use of output representations actually makes the model difficult to train. A popular solution to this issue is to explicitly separate the vectors that are used to compute the context from those used to compute the attention weights. This is the principle behind the more sophisticated attention mechanism used by models such as Google Spurt and OpenAI's GPT series. In these more general attention mechanism, the encoder generates two distinct vectors at each step, a value vector used to calculate the context and a key vector for determining attention weights. Similarly, the decoder produces a specific query vector at each step. Now, the attention weights are calculated from the decoder's query and the encoder's keys. The context is then calculated as a weighted sum of the value vectors based on these attention weights. The key value query concept is analogous to retrieval systems. For example, when you search for videos on YouTube, the search engine will map your query against a set of keys video title, description, and so on, which are associated with all the candidate videos in their database. Then it will present you the best matched videos, which are the values. In reality, the earlier version of the attention model that we saw is a simpler instance of this more general model, where the key and value are identical, both equating to the hidden state of the encoder. The query is similarly just the preceding state of the decoder. An additional widespread improvement to the attention mechanism is called multi-head attention. Multi-head attention is a technique where instead of using just one set of key, query and value, we use multiple sets at the same time. Each of these key value query groups is called an attention head. Each head works on its own to focus on different aspects of the input. Each head then produces its own context vectors. Finally, in the decoder, all of these context vectors from the different heads are combined together. This allows the model to learn to pay attention to different aspects of the input simultaneously, making the translation process more effective. Subscribe to the channel to get notified of new videos and visit LLMChronicles.com where we have a list of all of the videos so far and you can also see a plan of the future videos. That's all for this video, see you next time.